Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix.Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these, well, it depends what the object is that's flying, but they are a flying card. So this one is the ghost. So if I just move it there. <laughs> I think they're so cute. And then this is another one here. Now I'm not going to do a Halloween card for today's tutorial because it's not what everybody does. Not a lot of people, well certainly in the UK we don't really send Halloween cards. These are going to be used and they will be sent, <laughs> sent to some friends because I know they will appreciate them but they're really really fun to do. So what I thought I'd do for today's card is to do a happy birthday card but I'll quickly just show you this one here. Some of you may recognise it was from this stamp set here which is for the love of stamps and it's the No Place Like Home but when I got this it was only 99p on their website. This was a probably about six weeks ago now but it just screamed Halloween haunted house to me and that's how it looks and I just thought it looked really good so I I embossed it he embossed it with some black embossing powder there you go and just colored the windows all in yellow I've blended both the backgrounds the same and that's using the in the center it's fossilized amber or yeah it is amber I thought it was umber then but it's amber peacock feathers is the next one out then wilted violet and then finished with chipped sapphire on the outer edges here and I've done the same with that one. Now this one is using the Lawn Fawn. It's the house die, but I've got the add-on here, which is the Builder House Halloween add-on. So, I mean, you know, you, you don't have to have any of this and depending on what colours you die cut it in it can be a new home card it can be a Christmas house all kinds of things and I've also used these little bits here you've got the boo and the bats which I've used there and there but just bring it up a bit closer put some Winker Stella on there I just love this detail you've got the little door that opens with the little ghost and then there and I just think I just think it's so fun I use my bright rosa happy and then I just stamped Halloween and the you are Sp spooktacular is that one there just at the bottom really really sweet so if you are into Halloween and you like to make fun cards then this is certainly a fun one to try they move around you can just obviously you know change them up however you want he really spins he seems to have a I think because I gave him more room there you can see it's really really fun so anyway let's crack on and make it so like I said I'm going to do today's using flowers now I've been wanting to use my fun foam fun foam, my flower foam for a while since I got these dies here. So these are the John Next Door dies and I really wanted to recreate, um, it's not that look there, it wasn't those ones actually, it's oh, these ones here. So I wanted to do this one here. So it's using the ivy and it's using this one here. So I've used both those plates. I've already gone ahead and done everything. Once you see it all, if you would like me to do a separate tutorial on the flower foam and how to create I guess realistic looking flowers then just pop it in the comments and I will check those out but I've used here is the flower foam so I've got the crafters companion in the green and white I've used the white today but there's also this one here flower foam is 0.8 mil so it's very very thin fun foam is 2 mil so it just gives you an idea there uh, flower foam you can manipulate you can twist you can add heat to it to shape it there's lots of lovely techniques you can do so I've already gone ahead and I've created these flowers here if I bring them up Oh, still got some bits there but can you see you've just got all this dimension I've inked them these were the from the white flower foam and then inside there you've got all of that but you can I don't want to really do too much more with this but you can just just put little bits you know markings and stuff on them and like twist them and once you you know ink them up more but can you see just how much shape you get to them so I've gone ahead and done three of those already and then I've die cut four of the ivy um, leaves there and I've just distressed them using, it was actually using the peacock feathers. Was it peacock feathers? Yeah, I think it was on some like bluey green. I just thought that worked well together. I've die cut a butterfly already and I'm working on a five by seven card. But once you see how you do this, you can do this on any size card you want. So all you really need, like I said, it's very, very straightforward, but I thought it'd be better to do it on something that people can see themselves doing and using all year round rather than just on a Halloween card. So I've got my five by seven card, which I've got some ink on there, but that's going to be covered. And this piece is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And that's to go on top. You do want something that's like a bit more of a card. So if it is a paper, I would double it. So stick them together because this is going to have the pressure of the magnet kind of sliding on it. So you don't want something too soft. I may well even add another piece onto the back of this just to make sure it is nice and strong. This is from this one here if anybody's wondering I thought it actually worked really well with these 
can see the flowers just complement this paper pad wonderfully. So it's the Flowers Blooming, it's £3 from the works. Again, if I find the links, I will share those. So let me just move this out of the way. I'm just going to cut that again. I'm just going to just line it up against this one actually. I'm just going to stick these two together. Okay, so that's my card already and I've got that there. So I'm just going to start decorating the front. So I want to have like a cluster of flowers down the bottom, probably do something like that and then I'm going to feed in these kind of all behind it. I have a I have this happy birthday sentiment which I can add on at the very end but what you want to do is decide what it is you want flying and where you want it to be able to move. This is quite a big butterfly, I was thinking maybe to go for a smaller one so I still might play around with that and also you need a couple of magnets. Mine are the 20mm rare earth I believe. No, this is 15mm these ones. Again I will link those um, but they're nice and strong and they work really well for this. But you want to make sure you've got an area where you can move so this butterfly can move around here. I think that's going to be fine. I think that one, I don't know, I think he might look a little bit lost. So I'm going to go for the big one. Um, but again, play around. So I'm just going to get these stuck down and just kind of lay in, you know, nestle in even the, um, the leaves there. Bring this down a little bit further. I want them quite close together. So... This is going to have a bit of dimension, so this will fit perfectly in my 5x7 envelope box. So again, I'll link that for you as well. Okay, so I've done the front, that's all stuck down now. Then you want to add foam to the back. Now, thinking about it, maybe it might be worth doing this bit before you do your decoration. It's up to you. I mean, you might squash it a little bit. But what you're going to do is, I do double layers. I've already done a couple there. And I haven't gone quite to the edge. It doesn't matter if you do. I don't know really why I've done that. But anyway, but you want to run it along here. And then I'm going to peel that off. And then do it again. Yeah, it might be better doing this first, actually. I think because the ones I'd done before, the Halloween ones, they didn't really have anything too kind of dimensional. Was, everything was quite flat on the front, whereas because I've got flowers on this, they're squashing a bit, but I can easily reshape them. Okay, so I don't want to peel that off yet. But now, so I've got two layers of foam here. Now, the reason I do two is because it allows this piece here, which I'll talk you through in a minute, to move more freely. It's got a nice kind of area. Plus, you, we've got the width of our magnet as well. So it just, yeah, it just makes it a bit easier. But what we want to do now is we want to come down, but we want to leave a gap on this side. Now, my butterfly is going to be flying all around this top section. Okay, so I want to be able to move that lever you can kind of see where you want to move it. So I can come up here a little bit more, I reckon, there. Everybody's is going to vary. So just look at how you do it. You might not want to put any foam along the side. I would advise you put a little bit just so it doesn't dip. But you may find that you want a lot of this to stay open. And I'm going to do just a little bit at the top here. I'm also going to pop some here because I don't want it to sink. So I'm not going to pop it in the centre up here because obviously this, this needs to move freely along the top. But this bottom bit, nothing is actually going to go in there. So because there's the weight of the flowers, again, you want to do two layers because you want it to stay level with everything else. Like so. Okay, so now that will go on here. And you will be able to see the side like that. And that is where this is going to sit in and move around whatever it is that you put on front on the front. Now, mine's sticking out maybe more than I would like, but I can trim that. This here measures, oh, it's about four and three quarters, but take into account, I've put that foam in there now. You only want it to overhang by about maybe a quarter of an inch. So maybe there. So you actually want this to be four and a quarter. Okay, yeah, four and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. And again, I've doubled this up and there's two um, pieces of cardstock there which are 300 GSM. Okay, so that's become nice and strong. I've used my Kalau glue, so that's like a strengthener. It kind of stiffens inside, so that's now nice and strong. Okay, next you can stick all this down because you can pop this all in once it's all, you know, again, stuck down. So I'm gonna remove the backings. And then 
and you just want to very carefully stick this down, make sure you've got it nice and even. Okay, now I'm going to add my magnets. So I've got these glue dots here, so I'm going to pop one on the back. The butterfly pretty much covers the magnet, and because the magnet's silver and the butterfly's silver, um, it's okay. So I'm going to pop that on the back. So just make sure whatever you're using, you know, will hide the magnet. Okay, like so. So that's going to sit on there. Okay, then with this one, you want to make sure that you've got it as a pair. So put them together, all right, and then put the glue dot on the back. And then that way, you know that they are going to want to stick together. And then just stick it onto the very end of this. And then they will come apart. Okay. Pop the butterfly on there anywhere, slide that under, and it will grab it. There we go. Just give it a helping hand. But now, look, we've got a moving butterfly. I don't know if he's too big or not. What do we think? I really like them. I think they're really fun cards. Now I do need to trim that down. So I'm going to just roughly do so. And then I've got a pen that matches here. I don't have a stamp that says pull. There is a stamp set out there that says pull, push, twist, flip. All kinds of things and I keep meaning to get it but I keep forgetting but I'm just going to very in my neatest writing neatest capital writing just write the word pull on the side there and then I've got my happy birthday and I think I'm going to pop that probably just there there we go now I'm going to just fiddle around with this because I just feel it needs a little bit more just needs a little bit more something. So I'm going to add a few bits to that and a little bit of glitter. Okay, so there's the finished card. It's really pretty. I do love this a lot. I've popped some little rhinestones right in the centres there. So you can just see them. And I've just gone and shaped them all again. Just, uh, yeah, because they did get a little bit flattened. I've also popped that smaller butterfly there. Got the happy birthday. Got my little lever. And I think it's really, really fun. Possibly the butterfly is a bit big, but you could have anything flying here. This could be a card for... You know, a little boy and it might be a rocket or something flying through the air. You could have a bird, dragonflies, there's all kinds of things, a plane, loads. But I just wanted to show you how you can do it this way with, you know, very simple supplies. Or if you do have things like this, then you can create more detailed cards like this. Do your backgrounds. I loved stamping and creating this background. And, you know, I think it works really well for a ghost because they just, I don't know, it just seems to fly really quite well. I like that one a lot. He's really sweet as well. And then this one, like I said, he just seems to go a little bit loopy. I think because I'm able to do that kind of circular, it looks quite good. So again, have a little play around, decide what's going to work for you. But they do need room to move. So yeah, possibly the butterfly's gone a bit big, but I just think it's just a nice little interactive card. I love it, I really do. So I hope you enjoy it too. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today. Let me know if you'd like me to do a separate tutorial on the flower foam, because there's a few other things that I wanna play around with that, applying the heat and things like that as well. So yeah, let me know. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.